Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over your physical and chemical controls. First up, we have our chemical germicides. We have two kinds, disinfectants and antiseptics. And they both work the same way. They reduce the amount of pathogens on any given surface. With disinfectants, they're meant for inanimate objects. So an example of this would be your lab bench cleaner. While antiseptics are meant to be used on living tissue, so soap when you're washing your hands. And the important thing, why do we do this? And we do this so that we can save money. And we save money by using only what's necessary. So say, for example, we have a one liter solution of a germicide. But say we only need half of that in order to get rid of any given amount of pathogens so that we don't have contamination. The way that we do that is we would dilute that one liter solution, giving us two liters. Now we have twice the amount of solution, which lasts us for a longer period of time and prevents us from having to buy the germicide as frequently. And we can apply this directly to medicine where it reduces antibiotic resistance overall. And it does that by not introducing the microbes to the higher concentration. So if it can be killed with a lower concentration, we should try to do that. Same, same way doctors would prescribe a lower level of medication and work their way up rather than way at the top and working their way down. The reason why is because the bacteria, once it has resistance to a higher concentration, it's going to have a resistance to anything lower than that. So with that, let's get into how we would do this lab. All right, you guys should have a picture similar to this in your lab manual. And at first, it can seem overwhelming, but once we break it down step by step, it's actually not so bad. It's better than reading a big chunk of text. When you first get materials, you'll have your original culture, which is your bacteria, and a few nutrient broths to help the bacteria grow. Just immediately take one of those broths, label it as control two, and with your original culture, you'll flame a loop, put it into the original culture and inoculate that into one of the broths. Label that as control one, put that next to control two, you're done. We'll get into what the controls mean uh, a little later. Now getting on to the nitty gritty of the experiment. You'll have your original culture. You'll have four sterile beads, place that into the tube and let that sit there for a while. Afterwards, you'll decant the culture into a waste container. Then you'll take the beads and put them onto a Petri dish with paper on it and let that paper soak up the remaining liquid. Afterwards, you'll place the beads into your disinfectant solution for all three various uh, dilution types. So you'll do that three times for each dilution type. And then you're gonna let that sit for, I believe, about 10 minutes. And each bead is then gonna go into their own broth. You'll also have the fourth bead, which you'll take and you'll put that into sterile water. And from that bead, you'll take that and put that into a broth of its own and label that control number three. You know, you guys will be working as a whole class and each lab bench is going to have their own disinfectant. So maybe one half could do this, the other half could work on this at the same time. So they'll take a sterile bead, place that into sterile water, and then they'll put that into, into a nutrient broth and label that control four. So we have a few controls here, we have four of them, and what do they all mean? Well, we want to make sure that we're practicing our aseptic transfer and everything's fine. Another thing that could also go wrong is contamination. We don't know if these things have been contaminated before us even getting to them. So this is what we're testing for. So starting at control number one, we're trying to even make sure that there's even bacteria in here. Because if there's no bacterial growth here, there's going to be no bacterial growth over here. Because there was no bacteria to even disinfect. So we want to make sure that we have microbes to even work with. The second control makes sure that the broths we have are not contaminated with another kind of bacteria. Control three ensures microbes actually collected onto the beads themselves. So we want to make sure that we left the beads in the original culture for an an adequate amount of time in order for them to remain on the beads for when we transfer them into the broth. Control number four, make sure that we actually have sterile beads to begin with. So after you finish the chemical germicides portion of the lab, you might have to wait for the UV light. And this would be a great time for you guys to check out the autoclave results. And what the autoclave does is it'll use elevated temperatures and pressures in order to kill bacteria. And this is a very effective method, especially against thermophiles. So what we do is we would prep our media, place it into, a, let's say, an Erlenmeyer flask, and we'll put that onto a, onto a grate that's over a water bath in a tray. We'll place that into the autoclave and 
when it comes out, it shouldn't have any more bacteria in it. That's what this demo is going to go over. So we have our controls down here. Positive control is this yellow one here, which states that we do have bacterial growth. The negative control is the purple, stating that all the bacteria has been killed. So up here, we have the first one, which is all purple and is also unsealed. And this is just exactly how we would suspect. There's nothing preventing us from getting into the bacteria. And so the steam gets in and kills the bacteria. Here we attempted to close the test tube, but the pressure caused the test tube to crack, resulting in the steam getting in and killing the bacteria. Number three, we have a sealed test tube inside of another sealed canister. And with that, the steam wasn't able to enter even the first canister, therefore it can't enter the second. And obviously it can't enter the bacteria, so it would make sense that we do have growth here. However, in number four, this is an interesting case. I'm not sure if this has shown up in your lab, but let's say we put this one through the autoclave, and as you can see, it's unsealed, but we didn't put it in for a long enough time. How does that play an effect to us having a positive result? So if you want, feel free to shoot me an email on how proper time and sealing plays a role in in the autoclave. Let's go over the UV radiation portion of the lab. Now in lecture you guys went over the concept of thymine thymine dimers where there's a mutation in the DNA caused by the ultraviolet light and that's exactly what we're going to do in this lab. And how that translates to is you know let's say you have a bad smelling towel you leave it out in the sun for a few minutes maybe even a couple hours and then that smell goes away. It's because of these thymine thymine dimers the bacteria has now died off and is no longer exuding that smell. First up you're going to label your plates, you're going to have your name, the date, the bacteria, possibly even the media that it's going on, and the time of incubation. Next, we're going to have, we're going to create a lawn. I'm not sure if you guys are going to use a spread plate technique or use a, or, or use a cotton swab and swab the bacteria onto the plate. Followed by exposing each plate to the UV light for the respective amount of time. And then you'll observe these results the next day in lab. During your observation, you'll quantify it as, you know, hey, there was a lot of growth, there was a little bit of growth. Your professor will go over that with you in lab. But the thing is that you want to take from this whole lab is what feature allowed for, for resistance? You know, you guys are given so many different bacteria, and one bacteria will be given two types. It'll have, it'll be in its vegetative form, and it'll also have some kind of protective layer, which you guys should have gone over in lecture. So what is that feature that allows for the resistance? And also, too, what allowed for growth on the plate that had the cover still on it? So UV, the UV light still penetrated it for the full amount of time as another plate, which might have seen minimal growth. But why was this plate, the one that was closed, why was it allowed to grow? So if you guys want, shoot me an email answering those questions, um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you need anything else, have any other questions about these labs, please feel free to shoot me an email or come by during office hours.